Mr. Hanky? So it seems that my life has come to this, talking about the adventures of a literal piece of poo. Okay, that does it. Screw you guys, I'm going home. Talking poo is where I draw the line. But I joke, of course, because as it turns out, if it wasn't for this little doody, South Park might not even exist right now, which makes it all the more interesting to discuss the evolution of this magical turd and, of course, his cruel, cruel cancellation. Oh, come on, it was a joke! So, let's begin. And if you don't like it, well, I guess you can suck my tiny little balls. Mr. Hanky's origins go all the way back to Trey Parker's childhood. It turns out that during his potty training, he didn't want to flush. So his dad told him that if he didn't, his stool would come back to life and kill him. Which is a very interesting parenting technique that I will be sure to adopt in the future. But anyway, this insane story embedded itself into young Trey so much that he would often draw this Mr. Hanky, even putting him in a cute little sailing hat because, well, he figured that his stool after being flushed would then sail into the ocean and probably be a sailor. And then flash forward a few years and Trey was telling this exact same story to Matt Stone when they attended the University of Colorado. And they concluded that this hanky character could actually inspire a great short film. And not only this, but they saw potential in the idea of being its very own show. We wanted to make a series called The Mr. Hanky Show. Mm -hmm. And basically the whole thing would be centered around this piece of shit. And we would have Stan and Kyle and Cartman and Kenny this idea was, of course, immediately rejected by a studio head because, and I quote, I am not putting poo in my network. So when it came to the guy speaking to Comedy Central about picking up South Park, they just had one question. Are you open to talking poo? The person who was there at the time said, absolutely. And that was it. And, and we're like, okay, then we'll do the show with Comedy Central. Therefore, their beloved talking poop was introduced in season one, episode nine's Mr. Hanky, the Christmas Poo. For this episode, the guys were inspired by a 1965 peanut special, A Charlie Brown Christmas, and wanted to do something very similar. So in the episode, Carl feels alienated because he can't celebrate Christmas with his friends because he's Jewish, but he does know about celebrating Mr. Hanky the Christmas Poo who comes out of the toilet every single year to spread some holiday cheer. The hell is Christmas Poo? Mr. Hanky the Christmas Poo, haven't you guys ever heard of it? So with that, Mr. Hanky appears before Kyle, but no one else can see him as this sentient being. Say something, Mr. Hanky. And throughout this episode, it's implied that Hanky is in fact just Carl's imaginary friend, since everyone else can't see him other than being a standard piece of poo. Is this some kind of Jewish tradition? <laughs> and his alleged fisophilia even got him locked up in a mental institution by his very own friends. Bye, Carl. Happy Hanukkah. But when Chef hears all about the Christmas poo, he knows exactly who Mr. Hanky is. You, you mean Mr. Hanky? Huh? Uh-oh. And the kids are shocked to find out that Mr. Hanky is real after all, and all they had to do was believe. This revelation then cuts to a commercial break, advertising the Mr. Hanky game set for the whole family. When the show resumes, Mr. Hanky reveals himself to all of South Park, teaching them a very valuable lesson in the true meaning of the holidays. Let's sing and dance and bake cookies. Hanky breaks Carl out of hospital and jumps into Santa's sleigh as the town sings carols, but it's here we get another Christmas miracle, the fact that Kenny survives in an episode for the very first time. <laughs> Which is possibly thanks to the goodwill of Mr. Hanky. And fun fact, just to put your tummies at ease, Mr. Hanky is not really poo, but smeared fudge. Thank goodness. Trey and Matt have said that this episode and its huge success helped propel the show into the mainstream. Plus, it was the show's first musical episode, and because it was so well received, it encouraged the guys to do more musical numbers going forward. So I guess we have Mr. Hanky to thank for Kyle's mum is a B word. Hanky's next appearance came in season two, Chef's Chocolate Salty Balls. In it, a film festival comes to town, but the Hollywood elite's healthy eating habits damages Mr. Hanky's home down in the sewers. There's no folks in town eating nothing but couscous, tofu, and raw vegetables, and it's destroying my environment. 
Carl warns the film community about what's happening to Mr. Hanke, but instead it inspires Cartman and the filmmakers to produce an independent film. It was called Me and Mr. Hanke, starring Tom Hanks and a monkey playing Mr. Hanke. So since his first attempt didn't work, Carl decides to bring Mr. Hanke up to the surface to try and convince them to stop. But since he's only able to be above ground during Christmas, he quickly shrivels up and dries up on the surface. But just when all hope seems lost, a taste of chocolate salty balls revives Hanky. My salty chocolate balls must have rejuvenated him! So when a speech about South Park not being equipped to host a big film festival doesn't work, Hanky takes a more of Chef's chocolate salty balls and puts on his sorcerer's apprentice hat. While instead of broomsticks and water, he conjures up all of South Park's disgusting sewage to drive the festival participants away. Gosh, I guess I don't know my own strength! Mr. Hankey in other Christmas specials. Unfortunately, Mr. Hankey didn't appear in season two's Christmas special, titled Merry Christmas, Charlie Manson. But there were some people that dressed up as him, something that Carl wasn't very happy about. Behold, here's your false prophet. I like to think that Hankey was probably busy making the Grinchy Poo Christmas special, which made Charles Manson, of all people, have his heart double in size. The Grinchy Poo carved the roast poo. Wow, man, that's beautiful. Then there was the third Christmas special entitled Mr. Hankey's Christmas Classics. I'm Mr. Hankey, the Christmas Pooh. The episode didn't have much of a story and it was more of a collection of Christmas songs sung by the characters, songs that would form an album that was released in November 1999. It managed to reach number 33 on Billboard's Christmas albums and the Mr. Hankey song actually reached number four in the UK charts. I guess we really like our shit songs over here. Wow, what a great audience. Hanky pops in again for the season four finale, A Very Crappy Christmas. Here, Carl anxiously waits for his arrival, but when he doesn't come, Carl decides to head to the sewers to try and find him. It turns out that Mr. Hanky has a wife named Autumn and three little droplets named Cornwallis, Amber, and Simon. Hey, Simon's not so smart. He was born with a peanut in his head. And while Hanky tries to show off a normal, loving family, in reality, his wife is a mean alcoholic. That's not the only thing we gotta get working again, if you know what I mean. Why do you have to say things like that in front of people? After this, Hanky and the kids notice that South Park's Christmas spirit has been running low. So to raise some cheer around town, the boys come up with the idea of making their very own Christmas special, entitled The Spirit of Christmas. This, in fact, was the very same short that Trey and Matt produced in the early 90s. We then see Hanky's oldest son, Cornwallis, feel like Christmas isn't for them because they're just pieces of poo. Therefore, his father sings him a song all about how crap is part of the circle of life. You see, son, you're not an insignificant part of life. You are life. And what I loved about Mr. Hanky, other than his consistent optimism for sharing Christmas cheer, was his strong connection with Kyle. Because aside from their religion, Stan and Kyle were pretty much considered as the same character in the early seasons. But Kyle's strong belief in Mr. Hanky made him stand out and bring out his zania side, making him for once the quote unquote weird one. Anyway, back to the story and the Hanky family are setting up the film's presentation at the drive-in. And everything seems very ready for another magical Christmas story. But unfortunately, the projector broke once the film started playing. But Hanky was encouraged by his newly optimistic son Cornwallis to fix it, which he succeeded in and managed to show the film to everyone. You brought back the spirit of Christmas! No, you did it, boys! Ah, oh, hell, we all did it! And the short even teaches South Park that the true meaning of Christmas is buying presents. That is the spirit of Christmas. Commercialism. Because it's what makes our country work. Despite having four successful Christmas specials in a row, South Park didn't have one for season five. But they more than made up for Mr. Hanky's absence with an epic Christmas special at the end of season six. This season six finale, Red Slay Down, would be the very last Christmas special with Mr. Hanky in a prominent role. The episode begins with Cartman realizing that he's on Santa's naughty list. So to get some presents, he hatches a plan to do the nicest, greatest thing anyone has ever done spreading Christmas cheer to the people of the Middle East. And right on cue, Mr. Hanky arrives to help. All aboard the Poochie Express! Oh, that smells. Yeah. 
Things seem to go well as Mr. Hanky and the boys watch Santa drop presents off in Iraq, but the terrorists don't like what they see and shoot the sleigh down. Why? It certainly doesn't seem very Christmasy of them. So Hanky and the boys get Jesus to help them save Santa, and Jesus might be the most compassionate and forgiving person ever, but when it comes to Santa being in danger, that's when they cross the line. Although the gang managed to rescue Santa, poor Jesus was killed in the line of fire. So afterwards, Santa and Hanky told the entire town that Jesus' sacrifice should be remembered every single Christmas. Christmas will be a day for remembering a brave man named Jesus. And just like the very first Christmas special where Kenny was spared for the first time, Kenny returned from the dead after being gone for all of season six. Oh, hey Kenny. Dude, where have you been? <laughs> so we might also have Mr. Hanky to thank for Kenny's resurrection. My, he's iconic. Mr. Hanky's farewell. The creators have been very honest about how much they dislike the first three seasons of South Park, but by the end of season six, the show had really evolved and found itself. As such, they no longer need to rely on novelty characters like they did before. Now, I did briefly touch on this with my Aliens video, but this also spread over into other characters like Hanky, Santa, and poor Jesus. Therefore, over the next 10 seasons, Hanky would only make the occasional blink and you miss it cameo. But at least he and his family were often seen waving at the very end of every single intro, still marking their worthy place amongst the other South Park legends. But don't be sad yet, because we got him back nearly 10 seasons later in season 16's I Should Have Never Gone Ziplining. Thank you, Mr. Hanky. Howdy ho, boys. Let's get you back home. Hanky would use his magical helicopter 737 and the Poochu Express to return the boys back home. And it was a very welcome hurrah for everyone's favorite piece of fudge. But alas, this would be Hanky's last joyous moment in South Park. Mr. Hanky is cancelled. So now I guess it's time to talk about the problem with Apu. And no, I'm not talking about the documentary about Apu from The Simpsons, but the season 22 episode that serves as Mr. Hanky's farewell. Well, more like cancellation. And I know what you're thinking, in a show chock full of offensive characters like Garrison and Cartman, why was Mr. Hanky cancelled instead? Well, it's because South Park themselves were the ones who decided to cancel him. Some people find you offensive. Offensive? What about me as offensive? In the episode, Hank is tasked with being the director of the annual Christmas pageant. But thanks to budget cuts and the kids struggling in rehearsals, the usually joyful Hanky starts to lose his cool. Restoration Hardware put up their Christmas decorations two weeks ago, alright? And things only go from bad to worse when he puts out some offensive tweets. The city council members are a bunch of pussy-licking Islamists. Jeez, did I say that? And although he blames it on his use of Ambien, he's fired as the director. Do not take Ambien, okay? Whew. This was inspired by comedian Roseanne Barr, who also put out some offensive tweets. It was really about Roseanne, and you have a beloved character who, let's face it, is a piece of shit. Kyle does his best to show the town that Mr. Hanky isn't a bad guy, but when he's called to a hearing to explain, Hanky snaps. After that, Kyle and the rest of South Park agree that Mr. Hanky has to go, and so he leaves in a very heartbreaking goodbye. I hope I brought a few smiles and a few laughs into your hearts. Only to find a home in Springfield. Welcome, my friend. Please rest your weary feet and make yourself at home here. While some believed that this episode was made to dunk on The Simpsons, the creators have disputed this. In a DVD commentary, Matt and Trace spoke about their friendship with The Simpsons writers and how they were actually stoked about this one. Wow, South Park really trolled The Simpsons. South Park really took it to The Simpsons. And it's just like, it just goes to show how humorless some people are that don't understand. Yeah, we obviously we're, weren't taking we're friends with the people Simpsons. with The Simpsons and they were stoked on this. But at the same time, this episode was very obviously a reference to this documentary and the cancellation of a poo. And I've really tried to find out what Matt and Trey really thought about the documentary, but alas, they haven't spoken publicly. Now, personally for me, I never really saw this episode as Matt and Trey making fun of The Simpsons and his staff, but rather making fun of the Apu controversy as a whole. 
especially as they themselves have never shied away from offensive stereotypes. Bing bao ching chong. Boom, boom. Hello. Proof. Simpsons producer Al Jean feels the same, telling The Hollywood Reporter, it's actually in favour of us saying people are too critical. Harry Kondabolu, one of the most outspoken critics of Apu's character, tweeted he thought they agreed with him, but pulled the comment showing he was wrong. So, to explain Al Jean's quote, basically the creator of the Apu documentary Harry Kondabolu tweeted, did South Park just side with me? What is happening? But when it became clear that the creators of South Park weren't on Harry's side, he quickly deleted his tweet. But moving away from the topic of Apu and towards my personal feelings about this episode, I feel that Hanky's traditionally sentimental and funny persona was morphed into being mean and offensive. It just didn't fit with his character. Hanky was always a beacon of positivity and light when all around was darkness. It seemed more to me that the showrunners wanted to do a commentary about the Apu controversy and cancel culture in general, so therefore they decided to sacrifice one of their own, rather than give a serious deconstruction of Hanky's character. Hanky by this point hadn't been used in a long time, and the idea that this piece of poop being forced into the middle of a cancel culture controversy was a funny enough premise in itself, but the execution of that idea could have been a lot better. South Park has often been very great and very highly praised for satirising current events, but it didn't really feel worthwhile destroying a character's legacy just for the sake of a commentary on culture and the landscape of it in 2018. But maybe that's the whole point. Not with the poo specifically, but it shows how someone can be seen as uncontroversial one day, but then be seen as very controversial the next day. And maybe because they hadn't used him in a long time, he was the perfect candidate to be used for this type of story, simply because they probably had no other reason to bring him back. But still, it was a very poor send-off for Mr. Hankey, especially for a character the creators were really trying to fight for at the beginning. And at least for a character like Pip, his farewell was actually kind of funny. I would like to see if you wouldn't mind not smashing our little town to bits. <laughs> but unlike Pip, Hanky actually had a purpose. He was all about lifting people's spirits up, and so leaving the town in a depressing state just plain stinks. And knowing how essential Hanky was to Trey Parker's creation of the characters in the show, it just doesn't really seem right. But you know what, I think most of us can say that we would love to see Mr. Hankey redeemed and returned to South Park's toilets as the good old turd we know and love. 